Previously, we have studied about segment registers, multipurpose registers, and the microprocessor architecture. In this video, we are going to discuss the binary coded hexadecimal format. It is also known as BCH format, which is extensively used in microprocessor instructions. So it's essential that we should understand this format before proceeding to some advanced concepts like memory addressing. So in this tutorial, we are going to answer these three questions. One is we will be able to decode these hexadecimal numbers into binary format. Then we are going to see how many bits are there in these two hexadecimal numbers or any other number. Then the last question, which is the most important of all, because we are going to uh, use this question, we are going to use the answer of this question in the next tutorial, which is real mode memory addressing. So the question is how many bits are required to address one megabyte of space. So let's start with the binary coded hexadecimal format. So binary coded hexadecimal is basically converting a binary number to a hexadecimal number. Now a hexadecimal number will have H appended to it its last. So hexadecimal means 16. And since there are two bits, which is zero and one, we can obtain two raised to the powers. We can write it as two raised to the power four. So four bits are required to get 16 combinations. So let me just, uh, so let's um, draw a table here, which will be able to help us in uh, writing a coded format from binary to hexadecimal, binary to hexadecimal. We will also be able to do reverse using this table. So first I'm going to write the hexadecimal numbers. Since 16 elements are allowed, we are going to start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we will go up till 15 because after 15, we will exceed the limit of 16. So there are 16 elements now. Now, instead of writing 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because they take two digits, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use some symbols, which are actually alphabets. So first of all, when we have 16 elements, uh, this is the hexadecimal elements. Now let's convert it into a binary form. So let's consider the maximum element which is 15 so if i want to represent 15 in binary i can use this simple trick i will write something like this so 2 raised to the power 0 will give me 1 plus 2 raised to the power 1 will give me 2 2 raised to the power is 4 and then 8 so if we will add all of them, we will get 15 as the result. So this means we are going to use 1, 1, 1, 1 as to represent 15. We are going to use 1, 1, 1 and 1. So this 15 is actually decoded into this binary number, which is 1, 4 times. So since four, four bits, you can see these are essentially four bits, one, 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 these are four bits. So we require four bits to represent the first 16 elements. So similarly, we can write zero as four times zero. And to write all the elements, we do not need to uh, calculate this again and again. We can use a simple trick of writing uh, for the first column. I will write 0 8 times. 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is actually 8 times. And then I will write 1 8 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 
now for the second column i am going to do the half of this so now i will write 4 times 0 and then 4 times 1 and it will go on like this so next we are going to do the half again so 2 times 0 and 2 times 1 then again 2 times 0 then 2 times 1 and similarly we are going to go like this then you can see here at the last we are going to use 0 1 0 1 0 1 so this simple trick is really very helpful in calculating the binary format of a uh, of any hex hexadecimal number so uh, what i can just do is if i will write h in front of these numbers it means that this is a hexadecimal number so as to not confuse that zero is in binary form so if we are writing zero h you can see i have written zero h here which is a hexadecimal number so zero h zero h is actually decoded as 4 times 0. So how many bits are actually uh, this is taking is 4 bits. Alright, so one important thing is instead of using 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we start using capital A, B, C, D, E and finally F. So now we have this table. This is a conversion table, which you can actually look to convert a hexadecimal into a binary form. All right, so let's try to answer this first question. So let's see this first one, which is the FFH. Now this is a hexadecimal number. F, which is the last number, is written as four times one. So I will write F, as 4 times 1 then this f is also 4 times 1 so the number f f h in hexadecimal is actually this one in binary so this is the binary format and this one is the hexadecimal format so you can observe that this hexadecimal number will consume how many bits 8 bits so an important reason why in microprocessor instructions we do not use binary form mostly we use the hexadecimal format because it is you can see a compressed version of the binary format so it will be easier for the assembly programmers to write this format let's take a look at the next one which is 1234h 1234h and we will also see the number of bits in each of them so if this hexadecimal number is given um, some people might confuse that this will take only four bits but that's not the case one in hexadecimal you can see from this table is represented as 0001 0001 two will take here you can see it is 0010 3 will be 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So this hexadecimal number is converted into this binary number. So how many bits are there in this binary number? 4, 4, 4, and 4, which gives me 16 bit. All right. Now we have done these two questions to find the number of bits. We can actually perform this operation. We can use this table. Now let's answer the last question, which is a very important question in microprocessors. How many bits are required to address one megabyte of space? So one megabyte, one megabyte is equal to two raised to the power 20 bits. this is a standard uh, this is something which you can actually memorize because it will be used for a lot of time so 2 raised to the power 20 is representing 1 megabytes this means that i need 2 raised to the power 20 bits in a 1 megabyte so 20 
a 20 bit number so a 20 bit hexadecimal number hexadecimal number can be used to repeal to address one megabyte of space because you can see uh, to represent just four bits to represent four bits we need just one hexadecimal number so for 20 bits if you have a number of 20 bits you can use it to address one megabyte of space so this means that if you have an address which looks something like this f f f f f h then this means that if i will expand this number it will become 1 1 1 1 so this is 1 f then again 1 1 1 1 and we will do this five times so this is actually a 20 bit number because 4 times 5 you can see it's 50 bit uh, sorry 20 bit number so actually i will what i will do is you can see to represent a 20 bit number we will need five hexadecimal places so from 0 0 0 0 0 h to f f f f f h which is five times f h there will be 20 bit addresses or 20 bit numbers so if we have a one megabyte of space the number of addresses the number of combination of addresses will be 2 raised to the power 20 and the size of each address that will point to each element within this range from 0 0 0 0 h to f f f f f h we need 20 bit addresses which is an important point because in a 8086 microprocessor in a 8086 all right so let, let me just change it to some other color so in a 8086 microprocessor the bus bus line takes 20 bit addresses so 20 bit addresses can be taken by the bus line which means that 8086 microprocessor can actually address 1 megabyte of space so it can address 1 megabyte of space and we have already seen how we have got this how 20 bit addresses can uh, actually address a one megabyte space so this is really a very useful information in the next tutorial we are going to cover real mode memory addressing real mode memory addressing and in that we will create a memory block like this and since the 8086 microprocessor can access or address one megabyte space because the bus line limit is 20 bit addresses so we are going to assign this memory from 0 0 0 0 0 h to 5 times f and then h so this actually means that all the addresses that lies in this range can address this memory so that's all for this tutorial uh, we will see this topic real mode memory addressing in the next tutorial thanks for watching